they get the hint that you're not really there to roleplay and you're just there to kind of hang out. This episode was requested by my patron, Landon Bowers. Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about when partners keep dropping your threads. So I have a video on ghosting, but that video is really about ghosting as a concept and a fact of life within the roleplay community, but we've never really addressed what if you're somebody that's getting serially ghosted over and over and over no matter what you do. So that's what we're going to endeavor to talk about today. So if you're getting ghosted or dropped, I still 100% believe that it has more to do with the other person than it does with you. But that being said, what about the times that it is kind of partly to do with the you? So today we're going to get into some of the behaviors that I see that people will do that cause others to drop them. These are some things that you may choose to change about your behavior that I think will result in you getting ghosted or dropped less. This one has to do with plotting and with writing ads. So I'm going to make sure both my video on plotting and my video on writing one-on-one roleplay ads is linked up in the card for you. Roleplaying is about collaboration. If you have an outline of exactly how you want the plot to go, exactly how you want the other person's character to be, and everything in between, then you have left no room for your partner to input their own creativity. If your partners don't feel like they can add to the roleplay, they're going to get bored and stop roleplaying with you. Also, think about this. Why are you in roleplay if you know exactly how you want the story to go? You could just write a novel or a fic in that case. People are in the roleplay hobby to roleplay. Shocking, I know. So if you aren't actually responding, people probably won't roleplay with you. Does this mean you need to respond in a certain amount of time? No. Does this mean it's okay for your partner to pressure you for responses? Absolutely not. We all have real lives to attend to, and different people have different expectations as far as how quickly a role play should progress or how often they should get replies done. These desires should be made clear when you start to role play with someone, or if we're talking about joining a group, you should be able to find the activity requirements for that group in their rules. If you can't keep whatever those are, then be honest with yourself and find someone or a group that more matches your speed. I have seen so many role players get dropped because they tell their partners they can reply every day or once a week or whatever, and then they just don't. And then they wonder why they're getting ghosted and it's like, well, that's probably why. This is a continuum of behavior and you want to be in the middle. You don't want to be passive in your replies, and you don't want to god mod either. If you're leaning too far to one or the other side of the spectrum, you're probably going to get dropped or ghosted. Very briefly, passive posting is allowing your partner to control everything and not adding any creativity of your own. Basically, it's like being a roleplay pillow princess. God modding, on the other hand, is controlling everything yourself and not allowing your partner to add any creativity of their own. For example, hard god modding would be something like writing the thoughts of the character that's not yours. These behaviors are heavily frowned on in the roleplay community, and I made a whole video that explains these behaviors in detail, so I'll link that up in the card. If either of those things that I mentioned sound like something you might be doing, I recommend watching that video to get more information. This is also a behavior that is widely considered inappropriate, and I do plan to make a video about metagaming, so at some point I'll have that, but we'll talk about it briefly here. Metagaming is taking out-of-character information and applying it in character. For example, let's say you're doing a roleplay where character A and character B are together, but character A is cheating on character B. In this scenario, you're playing B and your partner is playing A. You know out-of-character that the cheating is happening, but in character, your character does not know. Role-playing as if character B somehow knows this information is metagaming, and it's wrong. You have to role-play out character B finding out somehow if you want to role-play their reaction to it. 
So don't do this. It disrupts the flow of the roleplay, it disrupts tension building and conflict, and it muddies the waters between in-character and out-of-character, and it's basically a form of character bleed. If you're doing this kind of stuff, maybe that's why people are dropping you. Now, this is a tricky one because everyone has different levels of what kind of out-of-character interaction they want to have. Some people want lots and lots of chatter in between the roleplay. Some people are happy with absolutely none. But there is one thing I find true. Most people don't want just out-of-character chatter. They want at least some roleplay in there too. So if you're constantly chatting and never roleplaying, maybe this is why people are dropping you. They get the hint that you're not really there to roleplay and you're just there to kind of hang out. Also, with this tip, it's important to remember that roleplay is not a dating service. Please don't come on to your roleplay partners. It's not cool. I get it. Roleplay is an intimate hobby and sometimes you catch feelings for your roleplay partners. But just like in a situation where you catch feelings for a coworker or your favorite barista, in those situations, romance is not really what people are looking for, so you have to tread really carefully. Same thing with a roleplay partner. If you catch feelings for them, you have to tread really carefully. So to recap, we covered five behaviors that I have seen cause people to drop their partners. Being too particular in your desires. Infrequent posting. God modding or passive posting metagaming, and inappropriate levels of out of character. So what do you think? Have you seen some of these behaviors before? Have they caused you to drop partners? Have you done some of these behaviors before? And how has it gone for you? I'd love to know all of that down below. And of course, as always, don't forget to make it a great day.